welcome you to our meeting this evening. Um, we are live streaming again, so we do ask that you keep any side conversations to a minimum for those who are, are listening to us um, at home or wherever they may be. May I please have a motion to approve the agenda for this evening's meeting? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Move on to our next item, 3.01, which is student representative announcements. Uh, Ethan Dominic. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some recent events are January 8th, UCHS students came back to school after a 15 day winter break. Um, January 11th, UCH said UCHS students had a luxury of a two hour release day due to the weather. Due to the weather. January 17th, UCHS hosted their 33rd annual MLK, MLK ceremony with guest speaker Mary Beth Tinker and award winner Dr. E.G. E. Shields Jr. January 21st, schools closed due to Dr. King Day. Uh, some upcoming events would be January 26th, UCHS will be hosting the countrywide, countywide math equations tournament where more than, more than 70 elementary schools will be competing in. It is from 8 a.m. to 11.30 to 11.30 a.m. in the UCHS main gym. Thank you. Thanks, Dominic. I have 3.02 superintendent announcements. Good evening, Dr. Hearn Bartley. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I have quite a few announcements, so I apologize. Um, we hosted our 33rd annual University City Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration last Thursday evening. Our keynote speaker, as Dominique shared, was social justice advocate Mary Beth Tinker, and our MLK Spirit Award winner was Reverend Dr. E.G. Shields Jr. While in our district, Ms. Tinker, a UCHS alum from the class of 1970, visited with both high school and middle school students and shared her experiences leading up to and after the landmark 1969 Supreme Court ruling um, versus independent school district. This case solidified that neither teachers nor students shed their constitutional rights at the schoolhouse gate. In preparation for a transition week, Brittany Woods hosted fifth grade students this week to tour the school and learn more about what it means to be a sixth grader in New City. Next week, they are invited to bring their families back for incoming sixth grade family night on Wednesday, January 30th. Current middle school families, especially those with eighth grade students, are invited to visit UCHS High School on Thursday, January 31st for the Get Your Prep On parent meeting for prospective freshman families. And on Tuesday, January 29th, the elementary schools are hosting their transition nights for incoming kindergarten and new student enrollment. Parents and guardians should have received an email from me regarding Desi's February 1st release of the annual performance report and how to access individual student reports through the Tyler Parent Portal account. If there are any questions or concerns, please contact my office. Beginning Monday, February 4th, Brittany Woods will be the host site for a very special three-part parent workshop series called Reset. These workshops will be moderated by licensed clinical social worker Candace E. Cox and are designed to assist parents with understanding their children through trauma-informed lenses. On, from 4.30 to 6 p.m. on Tuesday, February 5th, the community is invited to a reception at the University City Public Library as art students showcase their talents in a gallery show that will be hanging throughout the month of February. On Tuesday, February 19th, at U City High School, we're hosting Ubuntu, I Am Because We Are conversation event using the art of community circles that students are using within the school day to successfully talk about and tackle pressing issues. To save your seat at the circle, please register yourself and your guests online. On Monday, February 25th, we will be hosting our annual State of the District Community Meeting to provide an overview of the district, including our financial outlook, accreditation status, Test state testing results and new initiatives that have been implemented this past year. Parents, staff, and community members are invited to join us to learn more about how Learning Reimagined is taking shape in our schools and more importantly, how our students are being prepared to be lifelong learners and leaders. 
the nomination deadline for U City's Teacher of the Year, Educational Support Person of the Year, and 2019 UCHS Hall of Fame are due tomorrow, Friday, January 25th. Please visit our website for more information. And finally, we do have our Equations Tournament tomorrow at the high school, um, January, I'm sorry, on Saturday, January 26th at our high school. And we have our tournament for our elementary basketball program in the afternoon at the high school. Thank you. Thank you. Next is item 3.03. .03. Our school of the month is Jackson Park Elementary School. Yay. Yay, JP. <laughs> give you a brief history of how the Future Club got started. So a year and a half ago, Ashley Pavala came to me and she said she had an idea. And she had an idea, she had an idea in which she wanted to impact uh, the students at Jackson Park and their future. And she wanted to give them opportunities and experiences so they could see beyond um, their immediate future beyond Jackson Park, beyond Brittany Woods, beyond the high school, and honestly beyond U City. So how are they going to have an impact on the future? And so she created, um, just like she has created many, many, many opportunities for our students at Jackson Park, um, she created the Future Club. And so with that, I'm going to let her um, give some ins and outs of the club, and then we are going to go through some activities that the students go through um, in their future club. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, so yes, my name's Ashley Pavla, and the purpose, what, this is Future Club. See, that these are some of our students. We have about 18 kids that come to Future Club regularly on Wednesdays after school, and these are some of our adult leaders. This is Miss Mary Jo, this is Miss Monet, and Miss Micah, and then we have two other leaders who could not be here with us tonight. But. Um, so the purpose of Future Club is to help students dream about their future and explore their opportunities and discover their passions. And the way that we do that is that we have monthly guest speakers come in and share about their careers. A lot of them have really unique careers. Um, we've had an entomologist come in who studies bugs. We've had a photographer come in. We've had um, a variety of different careers come in and share about um, their occupation so that it can maybe ignite a passion or um, an experience in the students that they might be interested in in their adult life as either a career or a hobby. But alongside that, we also focus a lot on character traits and life skills that will help them um, no matter what future, no matter what their future holds. But we try and pair them along with the career that they get to study that month. So for instance, we just had an engineer come in Right? And she's a civil engineer. We had Nicole Adewale come in and speak um, about building bridges and building roads. And we learned that it's really important to have what character trait? Who remembers? It starts with a D. Discipline. Good job. Yes, discipline. To be disciplined. That means to follow the rules and follow a system and, and an organized thought when we're putting together our plans so that they can be successful. If we aren't disciplined when we're building a road, it would be really dangerous to drive on it. And discipline can help us in any area of our, of our future. So that's kind of the way Future Club goes. And then big picture beyond just our monthly experiences with our guest speakers and our character traits, we also have a big um, heart to serve our schools and, and make a difference in the future of our school, right guys? So what is our big service project this year that we're working on for our school at Jackson Park? Go ahead, Sam. You play there. Yes, we would love to be able to help our improve or repair some of our <laughs> playground equipment. And so what are we doing to try and make that possible? Cam? So, 
Yes, so every guest speaker that comes in is sharing something with us and we get to experience it and use our hands to create something off of what they taught us. So we had a photographer come in and we got to use cameras and take pictures. And at the end of the school year, all the different things that we've created, we're gonna have a fundraiser and we're gonna auction off these items that the kids created and be able to raise money to hopefully benefit our school and our playground. So there's a, um, a, an aspect of learning and experiencing for ourselves and our lives, but then also impacting the future of our school and our community. So we do some really fun things at Future Club, and we wanted to walk you guys through some of the things that we do, and we really encourage participation if at all possible. So that might require standing up and moving around and being loud, is that okay? Is everyone okay with that? Okay, good, I'm, I'm so glad. Yeah, we're gonna do it, and you can either watch us or join us. So uh, it'd be really fun if you joined us. So the first thing we always do at Future Club is we, we know we've come off of a really long day at school giving our best and working really hard in the classroom, so sometimes we need to like just let our wiggles out, especially if it's been like mental recess. So we just gotta move it, and we gotta do some like cross-body movement to get our brains working. And so here's what we do. We do this thing at Future Club where we go like this. We go, Future Club, Future Club. Future Club, Future Club. Okay, so I do the call, they do the response, and then we add motions to it. You get, you should stand up, come on. Yes, and, you, and we add motions to it, and you guys follow along, and it gets really fun and really silly, so I'm gonna put the microphone down, I don't need it. Okay, you ready? Okay. Future Club, Future Club. 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 And then we all take a nice deep breath. And we find our seat. <laughs> movement. Well, very first when they come in, they drop off their backpacks and they sit down at a table. We have all of our groups are led, all of our table groups are led by an adult or a teen mentor, which is really important. And they have that first 10 to 15 minutes to eat a snack and connect with their mentor. They get to talk about their day, ask questions, and there's always a fun um, interactive activity at the table too for them to connect together. And then we do that activity to get our bodies moving. We do some cross body movement to get both sides of our brain working. We do a nice deep breath to help calm our bodies and get our minds focused. And then we have to make sure we're ready, right? So we go like this. This is, if you are familiar with Jackson Park, there's the give me five, high five expectations. So this is what we do next to make sure we're ready to give five. Are you ready? I'm ready. To give me five? High five. Be safe, be respectful, be cooperative, be peaceful, and be kind. Awesome job, guys. So everyone can be. Thank you all. Get their brains and their bodies ready to work and have a great day. And then our guest speaker would come in and present, or we would have some sort of hands-on activity or experience for them. And so tonight I have two guest speakers who are my fifth grade gentlemen over here who are going to share with you their very favorite parts of Future Club. Who wants to go first? <laughs> My favorite part of Future Club is the visitors coming in and sharing about their job. Okay. Do you have a favorite? The one last year, my favorite one was when we did the coding and programming on the laptops. Um, What's your name? My name is Kim. Favorite part of the future club is when we, when we um, learn about our future and what's going to happen in our future. <laughs> so give it up for our guest speakers. Awesome job. awesome job. And then throughout the time, if we do need to reconnect, if we're working at our tables and we need to focus on a large group, I can go like this. Future club, future club. Future club, future club. Future club. And that means their attention comes back up here. Or if we're distracted and we're not giving our high five, I can go. Are you ready? I'm ready. And then I know we're ready again. Okay? 
And the really awesome other thing about Future Club is not only do we do these things and um, have really hands-on experiences and great learning opportunities, but most importantly to us mentors is that we're here because we love kids and we believe in their future. And so we want these students to know they have a place where they can come and know that they're loved and that they belong and that we have a plan for their future and that we believe in their future and that they can dream about their future too. And so uh, we always practice really positive discipline um, philosophies. We're trauma-informed um, in the way we interact with the students as well too. So it's always very positive interactions and believing and giving them the potential to succeed in our program. Um, but at the end of our program, before we go get on the bus or we go find our rides, we do one more thing that you guys all get to be a part of, okay? So we, if you see, we all have Future Club shirts, and on the back, turn around so you can see the shirts. It has our little philosophy. It says, I can, and it's written right here, and you can turn back around now. Dream about my future, I can explore my opportunities, and I can discover my passions. And if you can see that from where you're at, we're gonna lead you guys, you're gonna participate with us in a little call and response. So I'll yell, I can, and then you'll say the first one, and then I'll say, I can again, and you'll say the second one, and I can again, and you'll say the third one. Okay, you got it? And then we'll be done. You ready? Yes to Schools Committee was initially established by local concerned citizens who wanted to support the public school district's 1990 Roar Yes tax campaign that passed with an outstanding 75%. Since then, dedicated community members have worked to pass a 1996 rollback waiver, a 2001 tax levy, along with the 1994, 1999, 2004, 2009, and 2013 bond issues totaling more than $100 million to benefit the students of University City. That deserves a round of applause. <laughs> student improvement includes air-conditioned classrooms, new windows and roofs, various building additions, two new elementary school buildings, and a host of other improvements and renovations from track to music suite. In early November 2018, the committee decided to close their bank account and donate the remaining funds to University City High School in the amount of $2,660. The Board of Education and District Administration thank the members and supporters of the Yes to Schools Committee, past and present, who have done so much for our students and community, especially Bob Elgin, who served as the committee treasurer. We also ask that Mary Ann Cooley and Cindy Theory accept this recognition on behalf of the hundreds of volunteers and supporters in our community, and I don't believe they're here, but let's give them a round of applause. Our 
our next recognition refused to come and be publicly recognized, but I felt compelled to publicly recognize him anyway. Um, on September 13, 2018, the 400 students of Pershing Elementary School celebrated the birthday of General John F. Pershing, the namesake of their school, with a school-wide assembly and celebration thanks to the generous support of local historian and sponsor, University City resident Mark Weiner. I wanted Pershing students to learn about Pershing's life and legacy and how important he was to the rise of African-American soldiers in World War I. He said jokingly, it's also a great excuse to have cake and ice cream. Although the school was completely rebuilt and rededicated in August 2012, the 1919 cornerstone and trowel used by General Pershing remain a part of the school's heritage. More details about the celebration were featured in the September 2018 issue of Pride and are available in our new section on the website. We want to thank and recognize Mark for his remarkable support of Pershing Elementary School. Let's give him a round. The UCHS class of 1968 made a few recent contributions to benefit University City High School students. These include 10 cell phone lockers, $1,000 for band equipment, and an additional $6,000 towards three scholarships for graduating seniors at $2,000 each. The donations will help high school students be more engaged in their classes, enhance the learning experience, and make a significant impact in their lives. The Board of Education and District Administration recognize Barbara Tyner Light, Shelley Brockman Smith, and Helen Cap Kaplan Spegner, along with their classmates, for this remarkable show of support for University City High School students and teachers. Can you join me? three University City High School student athletes, sophomore Mary Cole, junior Grace Klein, and senior Tariko Garrett made impressive showings in the Class 3 competitions at the 2018 Missouri State Cross Country Championship in Jefferson City. Grace made her debut at the meet with a total time of 23.23 minutes, 5K course, Merrick earned all state honors Finishing in 12th place, Tariko completed his high school cross country career on a high note by placing in the top third. Let's give them a round of applause. In addition, four UCHS soccer players were named first team all conference. The best player in the conference for their particular position, fullbacks Jacob Cherry and Foley. Doto, Dotu, along with Mill Fillers, D Dillion Fitzpatrick, and Patrick Fuller for the fall 2018 season. Give them a round. <laughs> we also had one student who was named to first all conference for football offensive lineman, Jalen Jones, softball pitcher Ayana Williams, and volleyball outside hitter, Rowan Holt. Give them a 
team, the UCHS boys soccer team captured the Suburban Conference Blue Pool League title. Jalen Korn earned the Region Award for Suburban Conference Blue Pool Player of the Year and was selected as a midfielder to the Class 2 Region 1 team. His coach, Tom Henson, was named Blue Pool, Blue, Blue Pool Coach of the Year. And finally, the Board of Education and District Administration extend their congratulations to cross-country team Brian, coaches Brian Ashley, football coach Jason Wells, soccer coach Tom Henson, softball coach Janice Schaefer, and volleyball coach Kevin Cloud for their hard work with these student athletes. Student athletes, can you join me?
preschool and parents and teachers accessible to all. While helpful, the state money for preschool attendance is not adequate to provide universal pre-K and funding for parents and teachers. Research is overwhelming that quality early childhood education increases school success, particularly for low-income students. It is estimated that for every dollar invested in early childhood, the public makes $8 in benefits. Bullet number two, ensure accreditation laws support struggling schools and focus on measuring skills, value, and workforce. Our current accreditation is too focused on high state standardized testing and does little to measure sought after soft skills like dependability, communication skills, and ability to work on a team. In addition, our accreditation system would be improved if it pro provided supports and res resources early to schools identified as struggling and not impose actions that end up draining resources, particularly funds, from those schools. In addition to the above positive actions, the um, school district at University City encourages legislatures to bullet point one, refrain from legislating specific prescriptive interventions that dilute the local control of elected boards of education. We encourage legislators to allow education professionals and local boards to determine how to best intervene in educational issues. Every school and every child have their unique circumstances and therefore deserve resources that most efficiently address their needs. Bullet point number two, refrain from expanding charter schools or voucher programs. While a few charter schools in Missouri have shown success, the majority of them are doing more poorly than the school districts in which they reside. In addition, children attending private schools through voucher programs have been found to score significantly lower on standardized, on te standardized tests than their peers who remain in public schools. Because of these two things, we do not believe that the disruption or monetary burden of opening more charter schools or expanding voucher programs are beneficial to the students in Missouri. Attached to you will find a few articles Supporting our statements, please contact us if you have any questions. We appreciate your service to the state of Missouri. Respectfully, the schools, <laughs> school district of University City Board of Education. Thank you for, for sharing the content and, and for um, organizing our thoughts. Are there questions or comments? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody on the board um, for having continued to develop this legislative advocacy aspect of our work. When I came on, whatever it was now, five years ago, my mentality was that, you know, whatever is going on with state law is just a constraint that we have to live with as a, as a local board. And um, we quickly uh, came to the realization that there are some things we can do. And one thing we've been doing is this is probably about what the fourth such letter we've done. And each time we've had um, a significant portion of the board uh, go to um, the state capitol when the Missouri School Board Association has had legislative uh, days. And um, we've actually walked around copies of the letter to the offices of those legislators that represent uh, our area. I think it's uh, been a worthwhile endeavor, and I hope we keep it up. Okay. Um, so we have our motion and our second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Okay. And the next item is ten point zero two board member reports. And I'm not sure where I started last time. We go. Okay. I'll start. Um, the only thing I need to report is that I did go to the legislative breakfast that, that was held at Clayton this last time. Um, we talked about upcoming agenda um, items within the legislative legislators le legislature state legislature. Um, so things going on right now is that there is a push to fully fund the formula for this year, um, except for um, we continue to be.
I was happy to see the uh, Jackson Park students with the Future Club, and uh, one of the things that really meant to me is seeing how um, something can spontaneously come bottoms up. Uh, you know, we sit here at the board at the top, and we're not um, dictating everything that's going to happen in the school district. We have creative uh, students and teachers. Um, we are trying to uh, and working on personal personalizing and problematizing education and I think what they're doing in this club represents uh, both of those they're, they're doing something that they decided they they want to do that's personal to them and uh, I think it's uh, problematized just in terms of they seem to really be guiding um, what they what they want to do and I think it's great I just want to make a note that tomorrow we have a policy committee meeting at 9 o'clock a.m. if anyone wants to join. I just have a, a few things. Some of the uh, things we've already touched on tonight, the MLK uh, celebration was incredible and, and uh, I've been getting a lot of feedback that it was one of the best that we've uh, ever came to, so that was pretty um, athletic Committee uh, is pushing forward with all of their uh, school and community collaborations with sports. Basketball just started up, um, they're doubling numbers, so they are getting some, uh, some, a lot of participation. And a lot of that effort I just like to put out there. I mean, of course, the district is highly involved in it, but um, we have volunteers uh, in the community that are putting a lot of that together, putting in a lot of hours to do that. And then you see in blue, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the hoop house that's being put up, they're getting that all set up. Um, and then with the uh, special school district, I don't have any updated information except they have a superintendent search underway. Or your superintendent first SSD. I'd just like to take the time to congratulate our own board member, Chelsea Adson. Yeah. This is her first book. You will appreciate this book. It's called Savannah Saving Jar, so make sure you get your little girl high. Love it. But lots of congratulations. It's, it's at Barnes and Noble, and you can also get a book from Chelsea, so please invest. <laughs> Secretary Addison for upcoming meeting announcements. Yeah, so we have our next 
continuing our work session on February 7th at 5.45 and our next board meeting February 28th at 7 p.m. It's the beer and the beer building. Right, thank you. And uh, we do want you to know that both of those are open to the public and you're welcome to join us anytime. Okay. And having completed our business, may I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.